The Tanium client has been available cross-platform on Windows, Mac, and Linux for years. And it's taken us a while to get all of our module capabilities leveled up across all those operating systems. Well, we have good news for you today that we have released patch for Mac OS and Ubuntu. Today on this episode, we'll get all those details from the patch PM himself. Welcome back to Gotanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. And no, I don't wear this uh, ugly sweater every day. This is a callback, actually. If you've been with us from the beginning of Gotanium Tech Talks back on episode five, very early, we we're just getting the show started. January 6th of 2021, we dropped the Patching My Ugly Sweater episode. And we talked about some Linux updates with patching. Then today, this is dropping on January 5th of 2022, episode 32, and now we're coming back full circle with more patching goodness with our uh, guest today, the Patch PM, Greg Thomas. Greg, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm the Patch and Deploy PM here at uh, Tanium, uh, really focus on the operation side of our, plat- uh, of our portfolio, and Been in the operation space for 20 plus years, Uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, you know, all across the board automation. Uh, Just really excited to talk with you all today about some of the uh, some of the improvements and new features we're adding to patch uh, that we have added and that we're adding in the very near future as well. Yeah, there's so much to talk about. We have been very busy in the innovation department. So first, before we get into uh, the patching for these two operating systems specifically, could you catch us up a little bit on what are some of the improvements that we've seen in patch uh, this particular module over the last year? Yeah, there's been a a general overall um, user interface improvement. Uh, You know, November of last year, we, we released this brand new interface um, turned out that there were tons and tons of improvements we could make performance wise, large customers with hundreds of thousands of endpoints uh, pulling this data in and manipulating this data and moving around. Uh, So there was a lot of performance improvements we made in the first half of the year. Uh, The other great things that we've been working on is any patch administrator, especially on the Windows side, knows that you're eventually going to have some errors with the Windows Update Agent. And we've spent a significant amount of time between our uh, patch 3.4 and patch 3.7 builds in reducing those those scan errors and trying to automate the remediation of some of those Windows Update Agent errors. And what we found is that we were able to reduce those by 30 to 40 percent in most environments. And it's it's a uh, it's something we're continuing on. Right, we're going to continue attacking those little by little and continuing making improvements to. Uh, to make lives easier for our customers. Yeah, I remember when those came out earlier in 2021 when I was working with my customers and the the interface speed enhancement was very nice, but then those Windows update errors just kept coming back. And you know that's kind of what the platform does. We as Tanium, we don't have any uh, special backdoor into Windows. We use the Windows capabilities in that case. And I know we there's a, a million things that can go wrong with a patch, and so we've done our best to handle all those cases. So good work there. Yeah, you know, I wish I could tell you that for every one of the several thousand uh, Windows Update errors, there was an answer. Um, but we're addressing <laughs> the ones that we see uh, most often, uh, and we're updating them kind of little by little. So the, the improvements happen gradually, and uh, just just excited to, to give people back more of their time in the day, so they're not sitting there uh, fighting fighting with errors on uh, in the Windows Update agent. Yeah. Well, those are all great enhancements. And of course, dark mode dropped this last year as an UI enhancement as well. And these bar charts look great that we're going to see today there in patch. So uh, why don't you take us into what we've done here in the last few months, specifically with Mac OS and Ubuntu? I'm, I'm guessing because it's kind of a theme on this show that customers ask for stuff and that's what we build. Absolutely. Uh, between Ubuntu and Mac uh, patching capabilities, 
we've had we've had customers uh, hundreds of customer requests. I can tell you every year at Converge, uh, I'm inundated by customers asking, "Hey, when can we get Mac Patch? We'd love to, you know, do all of our patching through through the Tanium platform." Uh, so we got lots and lots of requests on this. Um, as with anything, uh, adding new operating system support is challenging, uh, but we're able to get it done for both Mac and Ubuntu. Um, and if you uh, if you all are looking at my screen, I you know. This is the home page of Patch. Uh, as Ashley mentioned, you know, there's a lot of great information here. You know, are we compliant, non-compliant? Just very easy to use data in your face. Uh, you know, what are the top critical and important patches that are missing? This is my favorite by far, because inevitably we're going to find patches uh, when we come in there and install Tanium Patch the first time. We're going to find some old patches from 2009, 2007, critical and important patches uh, that are missing. And it's a great place to start. You, you get this, you look at this board and say, hey, you know what? Let's start with these old guys. Let's get those patched. And then we'll move forward. Uh, you get to see your operating system support, uh, which patches are missing on which operating system. So when, you're, uh, when your SUSE admin says, hey, you know what? We're good. All those missing patches, that's the Windows guys, or that's the, the Red Hat guys, or whatever the case may be. You can kind of point this and say, hey, we've got some things we need to address there as well. So it's, it's really nice seeing these views, all this data you can drill down in, in, um, in your standard Tanium fashion, get details on the endpoints, uh, whatever details you want. But from a Mac and Ubuntu perspective, uh, the real exciting thing is that we're now scanning and have the ability to deploy these patches. So when I come into my patch list here, we get our Mac OS systems. And you can see I've got a few systems here that require updates. Now we can get some additional information on these updates. Uh, what systems require these updates, the CVEs associated with them, the Apple IDs. Um, now, the nice thing about these KB articles, we labeled them KB articles because we started with Windows. But the reality here is that these are for searching, right? If you want additional information, you should be able to take this tag and search Google and pull up information on this specific update. Much more. Uh, in-depth information than we want to uh, than we would want to show you in the UI here. But and uh, and I want to call out here. I believe that's sure. some Tanium special sauce, right? Because you Absolutely. can't you don't just get that stuff in the catalog normally, right? Right. Yeah. You, you definitely do not. Uh, we pull in the CVE data, that the uh, the Apple ID data, the release dates, and we pull all that in and give you the ability to link to that. Uh, it's it's a really nice feature. I know there's. A lot of other tools out on the market that, that don't have this sort of thing. But if you think about it from a CVE perspective, I mean, it's absolutely critical that, uh, you know, that latest CVE, that latest vulnerability drops, and you want to be able to say, hey, let me search for that CVE. I don't necessarily know the patch ID, but let me search for that CVE and, uh, uh, and deploy that patch. So it's a really powerful capability. So I would call that special applesauce. <laughs> oh boy, we're going there, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. And then on the other side of it, uh, if I can type this properly, we've got our Ubuntu patches also, right? So we've got uh, lots and lots of patches. And just like on the, on the uh, Apple side, uh, we have some special Ubuntu sauce as well. We can search for this. It's going to pull up in Google, in whatever your uh, specified search engine is, and you can get all the information on this, uh, on this patch that you need. Um, a lot more and constantly updated by the, uh, by the vendor. So it's a really nice capability there. But as we shift back here, as with any patches that you've, you've used in uh, Windows, Linux before in Tanium, we can take these and we can install them directly here, right? We can pick and choose some installation targets. We can send these out. Ideally, that's not necessarily the way that uh, we want you to be doing it for the most efficiency. Ideally, you set up a patch list. Patch list is simply a set of rules that says, here are the patches that I want to deploy in my particular environment, right? And uh, so we can pick uh, one of these Mac uh, updates that I have or patch lists that I have. In this case, I'll choose this one. I've set up a rule in this that says, give me all of the patches that are security updates, right? I can take this patch list. I can install this. I can set this up for an ongoing deployment. 
right? Maybe I want to patch all of my Mac devices. And some of you that are familiar with, uh, with Tanium, uh, with, with patch, are going to notice that this UI looks a little bit different. This UI that you're seeing now for deployments is actually going to release uh, very shortly. The user interface here is not out yet, but it's a much more streamlined interface. And it, sh it fills out most of the items for you. So you don't have a four page long form that you have to fill out. Uh, you can simply come in here. We've set our patch list. We've set our targeting computer group. And we can very quickly deploy this to our endpoints. Very easy, we get a preview of what's going out, how many endpoints it's applicable to, and we can deploy this. Very simple to do. Now, once we yeah, deploy I like, that- I like that new streamlined UI. You're looking forward to that. You know, it's really nice. If the, the deployment I just created was, was based off a of patch list. We had a lot of information we could fill out uh, right off the bat. One of the things our customers have told us over the years is that there's a lot of things that they can fill out that they don't necessarily need to. Um, and they're not sure what is required in order to, uh, they, they don't want to miss something when they create this deployment. So what we've done is highlight the areas. We put these little orange boxes around the areas that need some attention. Now I created this deployment from scratch. So basically everything uh, needs to be filled out here. But in the case where I create it from a patch list or create it from a, a list, a single patch deployment, we're going to fill out most of this information for you. Um, but it just makes it a real nice experience. You've got these orange boxes. You fill out the information you need to make that orange box go away. And then you move on. Once the orange boxes are gone, you can move on with your deployment. And hey, let's, uh, let's scroll down there for a second and, sure. and then not skip over the end user notification. That, that's a big thing. We, we put a lot of work into that for the Mac OS. Sure. Yeah, if we, uh, if we decide that we want our systems to restart, uh, we certainly have the ability to create uh, notifications, right? So for, um, for our Mac endpoints, the notifications are going to be just like we have on the Windows side. You have the ability to say, after a deployment, I want to give somebody eight hours before they reboot. Um, you know, this is all configurable. I want to give them the ability to postpone. I'll give them a 15 minutes postponement and a one hour postponement and a, and a four hour postponement. And as, these, as they choose one of these options, you know, they'll be prompted uh, again after that amount of time. Uh, and then our final countdown deadline. Hey, when we get 10 minutes from this final deadline where we're going to force a reboot, we're going to pop a notification and not give you the ability to, to, uh, to get rid of that notification. It's kind of your final, hey, this, this system's going down and we want to let you know. Um, but everything's customizable here. Uh, you can put whatever you want in these fields. Uh, you can brand it. You can add a title icon. Uh, you can add a body image. Uh, so very easily, I can come in here. I can add my my patch icon there. I can add my my own personal GT Industries icon here, and then whatever t text we we want to put in there. Right? Security updates required. Nice. And it's just very easy. Uh, language. Uh, you, you can add additional languages based on the operating system. Just a real nice capability. And that's, that's going to be the same on the, uh, on the Mac side as it, as it is Windows. So I know some of our viewers are wondering, <clears throat> we're announcing Mac OS and Ubuntu. Do we have end user notification for Ubuntu? We don't have end user notifications for Ubuntu yet. Uh, and this goes back to a theme you brought up at the very beginning of the call, Ashley, is that um, we're simply not being asked for it yet. I, I suspect at some point in time, customers are going to want notifications on their Ubuntu systems. Uh, there's a lot of Ubuntu uh, laptops out there, developers, uh, remote work, uh, remote users, um, as opposed to just servers, like a lot of our other Linux operating system support. So I, I expect that we will add it at some point in time. And it really comes down to uh, once we start getting that volume of customers requesting the feature, we'll go ahead and add it. Uh, until that time, we'll keep working on the on the features that we have been uh, asked for already. So for our, this is a show for admins. So for our on-prem customers, if you're in Tanium Cloud, you've already got the, the latest module upgrades, but if you're on-prem, what versions do people need to look out for, for patch module releases to get the Mac OS and the Ubuntu patching? Yeah, so uh, Mac OS released in uh, patch 3.6, and Ubuntu was added in 3.7. Uh, 
Uh, we will continue adding additional support on the Ubuntu side. Um, actually, Ubuntu and Debian in 3.8 uh, for patch. That's going to be coming up uh, over the next couple months. Uh, but yeah, that'll support Ubuntu and Debian as well. Uh, one of the things I do want to point out is that uh, in order to enable uh, Ubuntu and Mac support, uh, a couple of things you need to do. Just come to the overview and then come over to the settings and then switch to the operating systems tab here. And you're going to want to make sure you have this enhanced Linux support uh, box checked in order to enable Ubuntu and check this box in order to enable Mac OS. And the main reason we do that is there's some customers that don't have those operating systems. We don't need to config create those configurations for them at all. It just makes the view easier if they don't have those operating systems at all. So just go ahead, check those guys, save this. And then as soon as you go back into your, um, into your uh, patch module here, you'll see the options for Mac, for uh, Mac and Ubuntu, for all the different, uh, all the different areas. Nice little touches, you know, uh, not every customer, like you said, is going to have those, but uh, that's great. I like that. So we also have some materials uh, for our customers that are uh, just toes in the water with these new operating systems. Uh, if you go to our community site, there's a couple articles here, one by Darren Chin uh, covering our Ubuntu support and one by Kelly Huynh, uh covering our Mac OS support. Um, and just want to give a shout out to Kelly because she did a ton of work in helping us develop the solution for Mac patch. She's, she's a true uh, expert when it comes to Mac. And uh, she's just given us an incredible support as we built this capability. And uh, she continues doing so in, uh, in, in supporting our community via articles like this. Yeah. And, and Kelly was a guest on the show uh, last spring. We, she was talking about Mac capabilities and she was hinting we were talking about patching for Mac at that time. And now here it is. It's actually released. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, she, she's, uh, she's always been behind the scenes. She knows what's going on with it. So uh, she, she's the true expert there. I uh, just want to give you all a view here. You know, when you patch your Macs, you're going to give the, the ability to do these end user notifications. Um, this also is a new interface. Uh, a matter of fact, Ashley, uh, we, we reskin this thing. Uh, it looks a lot more modern, a lot more professional. Again, all these items are configurable. You can configure this icon. You can configure an icon up here. You can configure the entire message here. Um, so it's the, the idea here is to make it customizable, make it customizable to fit uh, your business's needs and what your users expect. Well, Greg, I know that uh, some of our viewers are probably wondering how far back can we apply patches on these OS versions for Mac and Ubuntu? Yeah, so for Mac, our current support is uh, back to 10.14 uh, Mojave. 10.14 uh, and above will support. Uh, Monterey works great. Uh, lots, of, lots of testing on that. And for Ubuntu, our support currently only goes back to 18.04, so 18.04, 20.04. Um, I do expect, I fully expect that we'll add additional operating system support on the Ubuntu side. The primary reason uh, that we released with just 18.04 and 20.04 is because the one, those are the primary operating systems our customers are asking for. Customers needed this now. Uh, so we pushed off some of the testing of the, the older operating system versions. Um, in order to get the release out. I, I suspect in 1404 and 1604, the solution will work as it is. But before we announce support, I think we just want to do a little bit more uh, due diligence on the testing side. That makes sense. And on the Apple side, I know some people are wondering, uh, and you and I were talking about this earlier, what about M1? Yeah, yeah. So Apple Silicon, uh, it's, it's an interesting story there. So Apple made some changes in the way the operating system works in relation to software updates in, um, for their, their devices running on Apple Silicon. And what that means is that uh, currently on, on Apple Silicon M1 chips, you can use Tanium Patch for auditing, right? The entire, uh, the entire ability to go in and see which patches are installed, which patches are missing. Uh, that's all there, that works fine. Uh, installing non-operating system patches like device support updates, iTunes, Safari, things like that. 
no problems whatsoever. But once we cross that line into operating system patches that actually require a reboot of the system, uh, Apple has required an, an additional privilege um, that coincidentally the root account does not have. And so right now we cannot patch the operating system patches on Apple Silicon. Uh, I suspect in the future that's something we'll support via MDM commands, but at this point in time, uh, those patches aren't going to work on the uh, on the Apple Silicon, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Everybody in the industry that provides services for those devices right now are kind of going through this uh, these growing pains of uh, supporting the M1. So another question I know people are probably wondering about is work from home, right? That's That's been the theme for the last two years now. So uh, as far as downloads, how do these endpoints download the patches? Because we've got the Tanium Linear Chain we we'll use for some things. I know Patch uh, offers direct download. How do these patches download for Mac and Ubuntu specifically? Yeah, that's a great question. So out of the box, these support... Uh, those direct download scenarios um, with Apple with Macs, uh, that is the only um, that's the only model that Apple's allowing now. There used to be a method where you could create your own repository and download from those. Um, that's not that's not a possibility and anymore in Big Sur and above. So all the Apple downloads come directly from Apple from an Ubuntu perspective. The capability we have now is what we like to call repository scan. What that means is that the endpoints reach directly out to their repository. So if you have endpoints and you configure them to the online Ubuntu repositories, they're going to go ahead and download their patches directly from those repositories. So it's not coming back over your corporate LAN. Um, they're doing their GPG signature check before they install the update. So you don't have to worry about the, uh, you know, anything malicious coming down. Uh, they're all signature verified. You get those updates installed. One thing I do want to point out is that for all those Ubuntu systems that you have on premises that you actually would like to use the Tanium linear chain for, that capability is in what we call Tanium scan, you know, Tanium scan versus repository scan. That's the piece that's going to be coming in, in a, uh, a patch 3.8 build as well. So right now it's direct to the repository. It's as simple as it gets. You basically turn it on and say, go scan. Um, and it starts doing its thing. Uh, Tanium scan is a little bit, little bit trickier where the Tanium server acts as a proxy for all those patches, for all the scanning metadata, kind of like a repository of its own. Um, so again, it's just a matter of, we wanted to get this capability out in customers' hands as fast as possible. And we'll add the bells and whistles in, uh, in the next release. Uh, so now I'm just wondering, do you have anything else for us you want to drop today? Maybe what's coming soon before we wrap up? Yeah, I think uh, just another thing I want to point out here, we've been talking all about patch thus far, right? Our operating support and patch. The, the same operating support is either added or being added in on the deploy side as well. So we added uh, end user notifications and Mac support in deploy back in the August timeframe. And Debian and Ubuntu support is being added now. I expect that to release in late January timeframe for, uh, for our deploy module as well. Uh, beyond that, some of, the, some of the really cool things that I expect to see here in the near future are uh, self-service on the Mac, right? The ability to open up the self-service portal and give your Mac users the ability to pick and choose the software that they want to install um, that, you've, that you've provided in a profile for them. Um, and then beyond that, uh, self-service for patching, uh, right? I want to tell customers, Hey, these patches are going to install. They're going to be forced to install at the end of the month. But if you're taking a long lunch break or you're done for the day, go ahead and push that button and install them. Now, uh, that self-service capability is, is really powerful and something we're excited to get out to our customers. So that'll be coming over the next, uh, over the next couple of months as well. Man, that's huge. Uh, that is just huge. I know the customers I've worked with have been asking for those things for a while. That's going to be so nice. Well, Greg, thank you so much for this update on uh, patching our ugly sweater, the 2022 edition here, as we're releasing Mac OS and Ubuntu patching now with Tanium. So we've got you covered cross-platform Windows, Mac, and Linux on patch and deploy. You got that little plug in there as well. 
So today at the end of the episode, uh, normally I do a little takeaways. I'm just going to let those roll on a slide and with some new show music as well. Hopefully you like the new paint job for the uh, graphics and branding. And I might be experimenting with that a little bit over the next uh, couple months. So you might see that change again, but hopefully you like the new paint job for the show. And, uh, you know, all the YouTubers out there say smash that like button, like, and subscribe. I, I usually don't like to say all that stuff, but Hey, we'd appreciate your support. If you'd like to like, and subscribe down here, we'd appreciate it. But anyway, thanks for joining us for this episode of go Tanium tech talks. And until next time, go Tanium. Man, this is exciting stuff. This is just great to see. Honestly, the, the thing that excites me most about this is this operating system support has just been hanging over us for so long. And there's so many cool features, things that we want to build, but we can't do them until we have operating system support. So I am super excited to get this stuff out of the way so we can start adding like the really cool features and automation and stuff like that. That's that's the stuff that really gets me going. So pretty excited about that.